and you can see the interface pretty similar to Google Maps pops up. But you can scroll around, you can look at streets, you can type in addresses. Uh, I'm just going to type in Chicago. So you see by querying something, uh, it's drawn this uh, area of interest box around uh, what you queried. Sometimes if you put in an address or a specific location, it will give you uh, a coordinate instead of an area of interest. Um, but with this, whether it's a coordinates or area of interest, you can use it to find satellite imagery. So here I've got high resolution satellite imagery. This is a bunch of different types of satellite sources. Um, high resolution stuff, if you have a budget, you can see these are pretty expensive, um, pretty expensive things. But you can look and see what the area covers. So like if you wanted to look at a lot of Chicago, that's probably pretty good. Um, and you can also do things like filter by the amount of cloud coverage that you want. Um, area of interest coverage. Let's see, is there anything with 100% area of interest coverage? Oh, there is. That's pretty cool. So you can see it's a really, really large. Uh, the blue that you're seeing is the coverage. So we'd have to zoom out a little bit for that one. Yeah, that's a pretty, pretty large uh, satellite image that you could potentially use. Um, but for stuff that we're typically going to be doing, we'll probably use, uh, you go up to these passive sensors. These are the open source sensors um, like Landsat. Uh, and the Sentinel series. Um, for my own research, I'll probably be using the Sentinel series. So let's see if there's any images uh, that we can get that cover this. Okay, so we've got cloudiness less than 9%, sun elevation uh, doesn't matter for right now. Let's go ahead and load a satellite image. So after we've loaded our satellite image, one of the first things we can do is go to the different band combinations, this little tab right here. Uh, so our eyes see in red, blue, green. So that's what this natural color is. This is a red band, blue band, green band. Um, but you can see that there's a bunch of different um, combinations of bands. So the Sentinel, uh, if you go over here, new band combination, um, you can actually see the different bands that the Sentinel satellite has. So it is 12 different, uh, 13 different bands because there's a band 8 and band 8A. Um, but uh, if we go back to these default, there's some nice, um, some nice things that are already made for us. So one of my favorite is the agriculture band. Um, you can see that urban areas show up really well as purple vegetation shows up as this green. Um, so right now this agriculture, this is three different bands that's being displayed. So instead of like red, blue, green, you have this band 11, band 8A, which is near infrared, and then band 2, which I believe is blue. Um, band 11 is great for uh, penetrating water, so it, it gives a really clear definition between water and land. Um, but in addition to these default bands, you can actually make custom band or band combinations. So this is one from a paper that was studying, uh, I believe it was organic matter dissolved in the water. Uh, and you can see that there's definitely some, some type of patterning going on uh, in Lake Michigan. Um, if you go back to the natural color, you can, you can kind of see some of it happening there, but uh, it does appear that, that this custom band might do a little bit better of a job picking up those types of those types of nutrient dynamics. In Land Viewer, you can do more than just view uh, different bands. You can also do some analysis. So here, uh, under this tab, I've got different areas of interest. If I wanted to save Chicago as one, I could do so. Uh, there you go, you see it right there. Um, but so I've already marked out an area of interest uh, for some change detection that we can do. So for this, I've preloaded two different, like using the, the scene search, I've found two different uh, satellite bands that I'm interested in. This is a, a Landsat, uh, sorry, not bands, images. This is a Landsat uh, 7 image from 1999. So the Landsat series has been going on for well over a decade, um, allowing some really nice temporal studies to take place. Um, and then I've also got a Landsat image from uh, 2020 loaded. 
So let's go ahead, let's go over to this tab. This is change detection. Um, so it's gonna ask for a left and a right. You see this slider coming here. So in the right, let's, this is my 2020 image that I already have loaded up. Um, so let's do that. So you can do, you can see the type of like the slider going back and forth. Um, but more than that, if we zoom in on my area of interest, we can uh, actually quantify changes that occurred between the two time periods. Um, sorry, it takes a little bit to load. So let's go ahead to this change detection. Um, and right away, if you look at the slider, you can see that there's a good amount of like development that took place in this area that was farmland in 1989. Now in 2020, there's a lot of uh, suburbs or some type of subdivision. Um, so for this, let's use NDVI. NDVI is a vegetation index, so green farmland will appear quite different from like roads or buildings. Uh, so let's go ahead and calculate the change. This might take a minute. Okay, so you can see uh, the areas that are red, um, that has a higher degree of... Uh, change in the negative direction, so the NDVI was lost, uh, the value decreased there, meaning vegetation was lost. Uh, some areas have an increase. So let's see, let's kind of see what this is. Let's put it down a little bit. Um, so you can see that areas that are red are more likely to be urbanized uh, in 2020 compared to 1999 and you can actually download this uh, you can download this uh, change detection uh, it's a raster basically just an image uh, if you'd like something else that you can do in land viewer is time series analysis uh, so this might make sense if you want to choose like if you're a farmer you want to pick out your, your specific field or something. But for this, we'll just use the same area of interest as urbanization. Um, so what you can do uh, is you can choose one of these three indexes. We're gonna stick with NDVI. Um, and then which type of satellite source you want, we're gonna go with all. And then how long of a time period you want. And you can see uh, changes in, like in this case, in NDVI uh, through time. So first result, it might be a little difficult to interpret. Let's split it by year. And then you can see, okay, in winter, NDVI value is typically low, then it rises in um, the middle of the summer, and then declines again. And you can download either the figure or the actual data that was used to generate this um, and do analysis like outside of land viewers. So this is useful if you want to look at maybe signatures of climate change, like shifting uh, when these peaks are or something like that, or whatever else you can think of. So the final thing that I want to show you guys uh, relates to my master's project. Um, so I've already uploaded an area of interest. Uh, it is the watershed, so the area that drains into one of my study lakes. Um, I created this polygon, this outline right here. I created that outside of uh, Land Viewer and then uploaded it. You can see you can upload here. Also, if you want to draw like more complex polygons uh, for area of interest, you can do that right there. Um, so what I want to do is I want to show you guys the clustering tool and how you can use that to pick out like certain features in your data. So if we zoom in here on my area of interest, you can see that it's pretty hard to identify like what is a land, what is, what is, a, there's some roads here, but it, it's all, it looks pretty similar. Um, so first thing that we can do is we can just look at band 11 of this is sentinel data and I remember I said band 11 is useful for picking out water versus uh, land so you can really see right here that this is this is the lake this is the land so let's go into the clustering uh, uh, you can see I've chosen band 11 um, we're going to keep it at three classes uh, and then you can just show the preview And you can see that it does a pretty good job at finding out where the water is versus where like dry land is. So if we drop this opacity a little bit, you can see that yep, it's it's doing a pretty good job picking that out.
And what you can do is you can actually download this. So if you click calculate metrics, this will probably take a minute. You get these different classes that you can uh, mouse over to select and you can download these as you can download these as like uh, these are called vector formats. Um, so this is shapefile KML. Um, but if you want the raster, like the individual pixel values, um, you can just click download the preview and that'll download the raster. Um, yeah, if you click on an individual polygon, it'll give you a size like this lake's area is about 17 uh, or 0 0.17, 0 0.17 square kilometers. So that's about all I wanted to show you with uh, Land Viewer. Hope you guys found it useful and if you ever wanted to check out some remote sensing things, I hope you have a better uh, sense of what they are now. Thank you.